Hey everybody, this message is for my fellow Gentiles. I know that this message is going to be heard by everybody from unbelievers to Christians to born again people, the full spectrum of human beings on the earth, uh, including Israelites. And there's a fifth and sixth group of people, which I'll talk about later in the presentation, that fall uh, outside of of these uh, categories here. But when I say unbelievers, Christians, born again, and Israelites, what I'm talking about is unbelievers are agnostics, atheists, agnostics, spiritual people, um, other religions. When I'm talking about Christianity, I'm talking, or Christians that are hearing this, I'm talking about basis in Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, or even some of the Christian cults out there. And when I'm talking about born again, I'm talking about people who are adopted into the family and have been given a new heart and eyes to see and ears to hear and uh, have had a born again experience. And I'll, I'll share part of my testimony as I go through this as well. And then when I'm talking to Israel, I just want to say disclaimer, this is not a lesson to Israel. This is not even really a lesson to anybody else. I do not claim to be a teacher. I will share scriptures and I will share um, some personal experiences I've had and perspectives that I can see from the scriptures as opposed to what's being taught out there. But by no means am I um, teaching any Israelites. In fact, I get most of my teaching from Israelites who are born again. Um, so I want to say peace and blessings to Israel. I hear Yah is with you. And on another message, separate message, I'd like to ask questions, uh, do a question series of two Israelites about Gentiles. Um, and yeah, so I'll leave that for another, another message. My goal here is to plant some seeds and point people toward, uh, the way, the truth and the life, which is Yeshua Hamashiach. And I want to prove all things from scripture today and hold fast to that, which is good. And I will prove that being born again is not a religion. It is a new heart and an adoption. And I'm going to give five reasons why it matters who Israelites are. I'm going to prove that unless you are born again, it is impossible to understand. The scriptures are impossible to understand. But if you want to be born again, you can be at any age. And we'll talk about some of the ages of the of the of the fathers of the Hebrew Israelites that when they were called and they were in their sixties and older. So it is not impossible. So if you're not sure if you're born again, or if you just think, you know, Christianity is a religion, it is not. And if you're not sure if you're born again, it is possible to be born again. If you seek him with all your heart and ask him to reveal himself to you, as you read his word, if you're sincere and you understand that you have fallen short and you really seek after him, he said, I will come and make my father and I will come and make our abode in you. And that's when it happens. And you will know that it happened. Uh, so I'm also a goal of this presentation is to peak whosoever wills minds and hearts to study the word of God. I'm going to give a couple tools that have helped me. So if it helps you, that's great. And that's what I'm praying for. I'm also going to prove that the Israelites, uh, the Israelite scriptures tell the future before it happens, thus proving they come from the spirit of the creator who made himself known to the Israelite authors. I'm going to also expose the fruitless deeds of darkness. I'm going to uh, help to um, understand how to remove roadblocks and blind spots, also known as strongholds, that fight against the spirit of Yah that could be working in your life, drawing you to him. And But some of these strongholds are are sorceries and enchantments that have been put there on purpose by that fifth and sixth group that I'm talking about. I'll talk about later. They are the, the sons of disobedience. And I'm going to prove that what you are seeing and feeling happening in the world right now is directly related to the Israelites. I'm going to show the wiles and the methods that the enemy uses to plant those seeds of deception. And the goal is to get you to the goal 
of those enchantments is to get you to blaspheme Yah, to bre break his commands. And that's the error of Balaam. That's that's the what Balaam, Balak wanted to do with Balaam is to have Balaam curse Israel. And finally, Balaam said to Balak, I can't do anything but bless Israel because that's what I told you. I'm going to do exactly what the Lord says. The Lord told him three different times, bless Israel. And what he then did is he explained to Balak how to get Israel to curse themselves. And that was to get them to sin against the, the covenant, the commandments. And that's what the method of the, of the, of the enemy that runs the world does to all people. First and foremost, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. If he can get us in any way to ignore, don't think it's important, think it's just a religion, get us to sin against Yah, then we curse our own selves because Yah won't have us in his presence. So he, he gets you to forfeit your soul through deception and create strongholds in your mind that make you a slave to sin. So I'm, this is to encourage my fellow Gentiles to wash our robes and to be one with Israel. And I want to pray in the name of Yahuwah and Yeshua that this goes out and that his word grows and does, does not, he says his word will not come back to him void. So I'm praying that for you, the person listening to this, if you're get, having that seed that's been planted in you today and or this is a harvest I want to give Yah the glory for giving the increase and celebrate together. And Heavenly Father, please bless this discussion today. And thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your truth. And thank you for this awakening. In the name of Yeshua, Yahuwah, I pray this prayer. Amen. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Okay. So what I want to do is define what I mean by Israelites. What I'm talking about is, as the Bible describes it, Abraham was called by Yah, and Sarah was given the promise to have Isaac, the seed of promise. And so it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob wrestled with the angel all night long, and the angel of the Lord changed his name to Israel. And so Jacob and Israel are one. So part of this is kind of to help with some of the irreligious or just religious people who don't get the full scriptures just to just explain what I'm talking about so that hopefully it makes a little sense and again piques your interest to, to know more or dig into it yourself. So Jacob had 12 sons and those 12 sons, one of them was Joseph. The 11 abandoned him. It was a picture of Christ uh, being abandoned by his by his brethren. They had 12, those became the 12 tribes of Israel. And then when the, the Israel broke into two, two uh, kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, northern is Israel and southern is Judah. And so that's what I mean when I say Israelites. What I mean when I say Gentiles today, and this also, you know, we can include heathen, those are Hamites, but when I'm saying Gentiles, you know, the Bible first mentions Gentile, and it's uh, there's something called the law of first mention, and so that's the definition I'm using. The definition that Yahuwah gave Moses, and here's the scripture. It's Genesis 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japhet, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japhet or Gomer and Magog and Madai, Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, which that might sound familiar to you, Rephath and Togomrah and the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided into their lands, everyone after his tongue and after their family in their nations. So now we know who the Gentiles are. Then it goes on to give the sons of Ham and then the sons of Shem. Shem is the line where Jesus was was prophesied to come through through the king through King David. That was Shem's line. So, and also I want to uh, again one of the deceptions they used to get people not to look in the Old Testament is they say the Old Testament is done. They named it Old Testament on purpose to get you not to read it. Um, 
they when you, anytime you hear the book of Genesis or the book of Revelation, that's another stronghold that has been put there through media uh, and through um, seminaries. You know, you don't t- teach Revelation to your to your um, church, right? And so this whole preterism and the whole you know Genesis can't be trusted and all that kind of stuff. Let's just go to the New Testament and let's test this. So it says these were sons born after the flood. So there's only eight people. Let's go to the New Testament. Peter, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that's a key thing there, when Yeshua talks about very few will will make it into the kingdom. And that's why this born again thing is so important. That is, eight persons were brought safely through the water. And they've lied about the flood through... uh, all media as well as education, they've lied about the fact that um, there were only eight people brought through. And so we'll talk about that again uh, a little bit later. So let's just take a look at online etymology dictionary. You can go there, you can put in Yafet, and this is what comes up. And I'm laying this groundwork, this foundation on purpose. Uh, If you go to online etymology dictionary, here's what it says about the sons of Yafet. It's an ancestral language of ancient Greek, Latin, and most of the modern Europeans. And where where we get in this country, our reverence for the Greek system and Greeks and Latin, that comes from the fact that we are Yafet. Most of us, the founders of this country were Yafet. And it says that he is a son of Noah from whom the European peoples once were popularly supposed to have descended as opposed to Semitic, which comes from Shem. That's where we get the word Semitic is from Shem. Uh, Anti-Semitic would be anti-Shem. African Hemetic from Ham. And for the longest time in this country, it was taught that the black people, the African-American people were from the line of Ham. And Ham and Canaan were cursed uh, by Noah. Um, So... That's how they, that has been taught for a long time. But now we know the truth that the, that, um, the Semitic people are different from Yafet. They're from Shem. And most of the people here in the United States are from Shem. So now let's take a look at this. This is the table of nations, which Josephus wrote down. He was an ancient Jewish historian, Yehudim historian. And he wrote, where did the people groups go? And you can see here, those are the descendants, and purple is Shem, orange is Ham, Yafet is uh, is green. And that's the number of times, if you do a Bible search, the number of times that you're going to find their names in in, um, the scripture. And so up here you can see now, this is the descendants of Yafet. And then these are the number of times that those those people groups are mentioned. So... You can see Tarshish is over in Spain and Portugal. We've got Javan, that means Greece, right? Gomer, which, and Ashkenaz, they um, are Germany and the Ashkenazi Jews. Magog, that's Russia, right? Media or Medai, that son is the Medes or the Iranians. So now what you can do, here's the tools, if you're, if you're so inclined and you're uh, I'm encouraging you to go do this because now is the time when you should get grounded in the word, word of God. You can go to eSword and you can do a search on a name search and it'll tell you all these numbers of times. And then you can click on the verse and read it in its context. So I'm going to give you an example right here. If you do a search and you search, you know, give me any verses that have Magog, Meshach and Tubal in them. This verse will come up and this is a very important verse. So this is Ezekiel 38, and this, I'll read it to you. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man. Now, if you read the New Testament, you'll see Jesus Christ call himself the Son of man all throughout his ministry. And so Yah is saying to the Son of man, Set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God. Now, 
Gog, the land of Magog, which is the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, that means that there's a principality or a, an Elohim over the, the, these lands, like a chief principality, like a, like a four-star general, let's say, of one of the gods outside of Yahuwah. And this is what the prophecy is against him. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya. Ethiopia and Libya are the sons of Ham with them. And all of them with them, shields and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomerah, and the north quarters and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After, and now here it is, wrapping up this prophecy. After many days, thou, who's thou? That's all the European nations and two of the Hamitic nations. In the latter years, so that means in the last times, the last, last times, thou shalt come into where? The land that is brought back, that's purple, that's Shem. The land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against, and you shall come against the mountains of Israel, which have been always a waste, but it is now brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely, all of them. But thou, those names, those families, those people groups, shall ascend and come like a storm, and thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Thus, thus saith the Lord, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind. Now he's telling them what's going to come into their minds. And thou shalt think an evil thought, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely. Who is that? Those are Israelites. All of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates. They don't have any thing to protect them. They don't have any, um, any um, missiles or anything like that. They have the Lord, Yah, who brought them out of the nations at the second exodus. Now they're in their land. And at the end of the thousand years, this is when this takes place to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon who? The people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. And I shall say, I should say in safety, as you can see above. So now he's gathered them and now they're dwelling in safety. And at the very end, when Satan is released in Revelation, it, it discusses this prophecy also. I think it's Revelation chapter 20, where Satan is released at the end of the thousand years and he goes and gathers these exact nations to come up against Israel. And then that is when the Lord smites him with the breath of his mouth. And then that is when the new heavens and earth come. So this is a prophecy and now you know who those nations are. So you can see those are all the European nations the United Nations, basically, okay, against Israel. So now you can see, as an example, Tarshish. There's many prophecies about Tarshish, 21, as is, is times he's mentioned. Um, and there's even more than this, guys, because there's the Book of Enoch, there's Jubilees, there is uh, Baruch, right? There is the Apocrypha. And so this is just scratching the surface, but... So now if, if for example, um, we, you see, you see a prophecy about Tarshish. This is an example. This is Pedro Sanchez, the prime minister of Spain and Luis Montenegro, the prime minister of Portugal, right? So you know that Portugal and Spain, when you're watching them in the news, that's Tarshish. Um, this right here is the head rabbi of, um, in Spain. Or Portugal, one of the two, I can't remember which, but uh, the head rabbi, and you can see that he's with some Ashkenazi, that's the gentleman with the turban, and then he's with some Ashkenazi uh, Jewish people as well. 
And then here you can see this is Ashkenaz, which is a son of Yafet. And you can see there with Reagan, Bush, there, and that one with Bush, he's signing um, the Noahide Laws, and which is the Day of Education, which we can talk about another time. But there they are with uh, Obama, as well as Trump. And here they are with Zelensky and Putin and Netanyahu, right? So that's Ashkenaz. And here is the head of that organization who's passed away, Menachem Mendel Schneerson. That's Bill Gates. And here's Jared Kushner, who is also a member of Chabad Lubavitch. And then, of course, uh, here is President Trump getting the Corona or the Keter given to him by Ashkenaz, uh, which means crown. And we can go into that also a little bit later. And you can see here that Ashkenaz uh, runs the world in terms of um, their positions of power. Okay. So now you kind of have an idea, right? So now when you're looking at the scriptures and you see these names, you can get an idea of what people groups they are. Now there's another, like I said, there's a fifth and a sixth group. The fifth group is Edom Esau. And the sixth group is the watchers and their offspring. So we'll talk about those a little bit later, but they play a part in today's, in today's world. Um, it's been hidden from, it's part of the occult and it's the occult means hidden. It's part of the hidden hand that runs the world that is now making their ways known because it's called the externalization of the hierarchy. They are now letting the world know about themselves in a more open way because they know that the timing of what's happening. So, but here's the most interesting thing. So you can see the numbers of times you can do word studies and then start looking at the scriptures. And, and now you know who's talking about who. Anytime it says Gentiles, you know who that is. Um, anytime it says heathen, that would be Hamitics or Hamites, or that could also be Shemites before Abraham. So that would be like um, the uh, Arabian nations, right? Um, so, but there's only one group of Israelites and that those are the 12 sons. And here are the number of times that they're mentioned. So you can see how important a role that Israel and Judah play, the Northern and Southern Kingdom, Northern and Southern Kingdom, excuse me. So going back to this and taking a look at what people call the Bible, which is really just a scrolls written by the descendants of Abraham, uh, the 12 sons, most of the entire, most of the Bible is written by Judah, Levi, um, and, uh, Simeon. I've got a, a slide on a little bit later, but Ju Judah and Levi were the main writers of uh, everything you write, everything you read in it, excuse me, all the wisdom and everything given to them by God, that was written by, mostly by Judah and Levi, those two tribes. So here we can see that the genealogy, and this is something that you can um, you can d fact check yourself. You can go check. This is in the, in the scriptures. We can find an, a, a bloodline that goes from Adam to Yeshua Christ. And that blue a square, this one right here. Um, this is important to understand too. I'm not going to get into it too much today, but it has to do with that sixth group, which are the angels, the watchers and their offspring. And that, that entire story is told in first Enoch. So if you, I would highly suggest you read first Enoch, because if you don't understand that, you won't understand this whole battle that the Israelites had all through the, what we call the old Testament, but all throughout the Torah and the Tanakh. You're not going to understand it. It won't be in context. You're just going to think it's, again, you're going to just take these sound bites that were planted there on purpose to make you think this is a religion and get you to think that Christianity is angry white people that have signs that say, I hate gays. And it totally just misses the entire point, the depth and the understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom of God that is laying out his plan right before the council of the gods, which are all the other gods that are in the, in the heavens. Um, both fallen and and unfallen 
angels, angelic host, that are watching this play out in real time. And they've got stake in the they've got a stake in the game. And so if you want to understand the scriptures better, read first Enoch. Um, there are two other books of Enoch. Do not read those because those are the ones that are twisted, that are used in sorceries and those types of things that came much later. So now we take a look at, um, and I want to also, this is also an enchantment or a sorcery that is used to, again, plant seeds in people's minds to give them pictures so that they think a certain way. And this is one of the deceptions on what did Jesus look like. That is a deception that is clearly you can now research it. And the reason you can research it now is because Daniel said, uh, the angel said to Daniel, seal up the prophecies of this book until the latter end times when people will go to and fro and knowledge will increase. That's the time that we're in now. So the reason this is happening now is because that prophecy is true because we are at that time. So I want to I want to X out that little sorcery right there so that you don't focus on that. And I want you to get, get you to focus on something that's important because I'm, I'm, I'm laying the foundation to make a point. So here we have Noah, his three sons. It's through Shem that we get the Bible, that we get what we call the Bible. It's through Shem that we get the word of God directly from God given to him. God showed up in human form to Abraham and his wife, Sarah, or to Abram and his wife, Sarah, and gave them the promise and then changed their name to Abraham and Sarai. And so Jacob, again, his name was changed to Israel. And then they had 12 sons, Judah plus 11 other sons. Okay, so that's the line that goes to King David. And then those are the promises, all the prophecies throughout, written throughout all of the scriptures that the coming of the Messiah would come. And there's, there's over 800 prophecies of Yeshua coming before he came and thousands of years beforehand that describe him in detail. So you almost have to be living under a rock not to have heard that the Bible tells the future. And I want to also combat and fight and uh, um, help you to erase the thought that, well, yeah, so does Nostradamus. I dare you to go compare Nostradamus's entire writings to the scriptures and you tell me what is clearer. Okay, you tell me what is lays it out in detail better. That is nothing but a deception to get you think that there's more, um, there is more um, miraculous writings that were inspired by the spirit of Yah or by a spirit that can divine the future. All these fortune tellers, they're, they're worth nothing. And that's why I highly suggest you look into the prophecies because it's an impossibility to fake them because the entire Old Testament was translated into Greek uh, centuries before Jesus came. So that entire you can't go back and place prophecies back into those scriptures about Jesus to fake it. That's that's where that's where Yah looks over His word to perform it, so that you can trust. And then, of course, you can see the lineage from the line of Mary and the line of Joseph, all the way to. Jesus Christ. Uh, so we've got the line of Mary, the seed of the woman, and then also the line of Joseph, which is a legal line um, because the law, the, the Torah is the law and Yah wrote it. So he did everything perfectly. Now there's also two other things I want to just mention here, which would be uh, Rahab, the prostitute who is in the line of Jesus Christ was not an Israelite. Uh, Ruth was not an Israelite. Joseph's wife was not an Israelite. She was a Hamite. And so I just want to point that out. Um, again, that would be on my questions to Israelites um, video that, I, that I'll, I'll think about doing. But uh, if I do it, they're going to be in there. So I just wanted to bring that up. So, and because even if the, I just want to go back on this, even if in in Romans, it talks about being grafted in. Even if that is the northern tribes, I still, I still, uh, you know, as, as someone who is born, I feel is born again. Thank you, Yah, for that, and thank you, Father, in heaven, bless your name forever. Um, that I will plead Rahab's words, and I will plead the Canaanite woman's words. 
uh, that even the dogs would like the crumbs. I, I'll take that because I want to be where Yah is. That's that's what I'm going to say. So, okay, now with that, what I want to do is I want to plant a seed or harvest a seed to anybody in these groups because right now, Israelites, the bloodline descendants, have been scattered amongst the nations and they are amongst unbelievers, irreligious Christians, born agains, Edom and Esau, and they're all being watched by the watchers and Yah, right? And so what I want to do is plant a seed that says, okay, as you're seeing this group of people come back and leave, come back to their culture and leave these um, ideologies or religions, right? And they're coming back to the way is, and, and their, their bones are being awakened, right? This is a fulfillment of prophecy, the dry bones. So I want to take a minute to explain to the Christians and the unbelievers that this is a prophecy that's taken place before our eyes with all these African-American people, men and women waking up and saying, I'm Israel. Okay. So this is Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. And it was full of bones. Now this is the son of man. This is Yeshua. He led me all around among them. Now, of course, son of man also refers to Ezekiel too. But again, it's, you can think of it both ways, right? And then I saw a great many of bones on the floor of the valley, and indeed they were very dry. That's where you hear the dry bones. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? O Lord God, I replied, only you know. And he said to me, prophesy concerning these bones and tell them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you will come to life. Then he said, prophesy to the breath, prophesy to the prophesy son of man and tell the breath that this is what the Lord God says, come from the four winds. The four winds are what drove the Israelites all into the nations and from everywhere. That's the four winds. Now he's telling them, breathe onto these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So like I've said before, the Bible normally tells you exactly what it's telling you so you can understand it. It is not, not understandable. People avoid reading the Bible because some things are scary or because they don't understand it. But if once you understand the kind of the overarching story about what it's about, then you'll get it and it'll start making sense to you. And also the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what it means. If you are born again, you will understand the scriptures. It's very difficult for anybody that's not born again to understand the scriptures. Therefore they avoid them. They don't want to read them. They're not drawn to them. And Yeshua said, no one comes to me unless the father draws them to me and I will raise them up on the last day. So if you're being drawn to the scriptures, hallelujah, bless Yah, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, you can be born again if you want to be born again. It is not some esoteric system of religious gobbledygook. It is humbling yourself, seeking him, and letting him reveal himself to you when you study his word, you look at his word. And therefore the prophecy, therefore prophesy and tell them that this is what the Lord God says. Oh, my people, my people, Israel, I will open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. That's the second Exodus. Then you, my people will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. I ask then, now this is a confirming verse from the New Testament so that we can understand what we just read. This is Paul talking 
in Hebrews. He's talking to the Gentiles or to the Northern Kingdom, however, I guess we want to look at that. But I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. What then? Israel fulfilled to obtain what it was seeking? Excuse me, what then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day. That is, a, that is the example of God's sovereignty and man's free will. If you don't want him, you won't get him. He will hide himself from you. If you don't want to be born again, he will let you, he will turn yourself over to yourself and he'll give you a spirit of stupor, eyes that cannot see and ears that will not hear. So then he goes on to say, so I ask, did they stumble? Did the Hebrew Israelites stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles, to the rest of the nations, so as to make Israel jealous. And in another scripture, it says, make Israel jealous by a foolish nation. We will see that word foolish several times in this presentation, so we will find out who that nation is. Now, if their trespass, the Israelites' trespass, means riches for the world, and we see that their trespass has meant riches for the world. And if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, and we see that their failure has meant riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead, dry bones coming to life? That's their reconciliation. And there is a time line put on that reconciliation, which we can look at at another time. So the other thing that we can see here is the fig tree. And let's look at Yeshua, Jesus Christ's teaching about the fig tree. This is in Luke 21. So go read Luke 21 to get the full context because this has to do with the latter times. He told them this parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees when they sprout leaves. You can see for yourself and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. So the, the generation that he's talking about is the generation that sees the fig tree sprout leaves. The fig tree is the Israelites. He goes on to say, Jesus does, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, be careful, be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and anxieties of this life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on those all who live on the face of the whole earth. So be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. So when you're watching the news, you'll, you're going to have an understanding of what's going on and you are to pray to escape. Pray that you will be able to escape all that is about to happen and be able to stand before the Son of Man. So the seed I want to plant is for the people who think that this is a religion or that any other religion is just a religion and all religions are kind of the same and you know, it's the parable that is told in uh, other religions of the elephant with the seven blind men. And each is feeling a piece of the elephant and saying, this is what God is like. And this is what God is like. And all of them are saying different things. It's the parable basically says all religions basically say the same thing and lead to God. And the irony of that parable is the author is placing himself in the position of clear vision, of knowing everything, and basically telling everybody else, you don't know anything, I do. I can see the whole picture clearly. Well, the only person who can see the picture clearly is the, is the person who has revelation directly from the Creator. 
If you have revelation from the Creator, you can see all things clearly. If you or see more clearly, let's put it that way, because it's not all fulfilled yet. So if you're still thinking that it's a, a religion, I'm encouraging you to search out what it means to be born again. Because Jesus Christ said, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Nicodemus asked him, how can a man be born when, is he, when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time? Jesus answered and said, truly, 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 truly. That means amen, amen. For sure, know this. There is no one that can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh is born of flesh, but spirit is born of spirit. Do not be amazed that I said this. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound, but do not know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And, I, and I'll share my experience of being born again because here's another scripture that shows the difference between, let's say, believing something, being religious, let's say, and then being born again. And this confirms it. Paul says, and it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples and he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And that's a question I have for my fellow Gentiles who I'm directing this message at. Because it means something when you have that spirit, you become adopted. You become one with family. You are now in the family of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we'll talk about why that's the proper response to that in a little bit later. But the question is, did you ever receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Believing is not just a, a mental assent. They said, no, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. And that baptism, there's only one baptism, and it's not an infant baptism because it, it describes what it means to be baptized in other scriptures. They said into John's baptism, and Paul said John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who was to come after him, and that is Jesus. There's two words in the New Testament that is the words for believe. One is human believing, when you look it up in Strong's. The other one is an inbirthed faith put there by Yah God. Two different types of belief. Believing something is does not mean mental assent. If you haven't had the inbirthing form of belief, meaning born again, then you are only in a human understanding. And he's telling them, tell the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is Jesus, seek after him so that he can make his abode with you. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. They were born again. And they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about 12 men in all. So what's the purpose of being born again? If you are born once, you will die twice. And let's take a look and let's let scripture uh, interpret scripture. The verse at the bottom, John 3, 28, this is in Revelation. So this is, I think, Revelation 20. So that's a mistake. But, and I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and the books were opened. And then another book was opened, which was the book of life. The enemy, part of the wiles of the devil, which we are supposed to be aware of, according to the New Testament, when we're warned, is to know and understand what they are doing so that you can avoid them and not be deceived. And one of the wiles of the devil is to think that there's not going to be a, a judgment. Um, and so, and also to get you not to read the book of Revelation or the book of Genesis or the Old Testament, like I've mentioned before. So, and the dead were, and so then another book was opened, which is the book of life. Oh, and what I was going to make the point of is the wiles of the devil is to get you to sin against yourself, blaspheme, and die in sin. If you die in sin, you cannot go where Jesus is. So, and what is this, what is, how, and what is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. It's transgression of the Ten Commandments. How do you keep the Ten Commandments? 
by being born again and having the power of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Christ, spirit live within you and guide you away from sin, escape sin, flee from sin, and keep the Ten Commandments. And you do that through the power of Christ, not in your own fleshly strength. And you will start keeping the Sabbath. You will start wanting to hear from the Israelites who were given the scriptures. It says in, uh, I think, Timothy, it says, uh, what, uh, well, Paul says in one of the scriptures, what good is it to be a Jew, much in every way, that we were given the oracles of God, that these this family got the, got the words of God. So you'll start wanting to learn from born-again Israelites. So, and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. According to what they had done, the decisions they had made. Was it important to you? Did you really want to find Yah and Yeshua? Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That's the second death for those that were not found in the book of life. The people in the book of life are the ones that were born again. This this is the second death, which is the lake of fire. This is a real place, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So, and here's the example that I talked about before, um, about the baptism. Uh, Philip saw the eunuch reading Isaiah 53 and said, do you know who this is about? About whom I ask you, does this prophet say this about himself or someone else when he's talking about Isaiah 53? So you can go read Isaiah 53. Um, so, th so this is uh, Isaiah 53, about whom I ask you, does this prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scriptures, he told him the good news about Jesus. Now there was new, no New Testament. He was only reading from the, new, the Old Testament, all the prophecies from, uh, from uh, Moses all the way to Malachi. And he told him the good news about Yeshua. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And when they came up out of the water, oh, excuse me, and he said to Philip, um, there's a little bit messed up there on the, on the script, on the screen. But the point is, is that when they, he, he said, see, here's the water. What prevents me from being baptized, baptized? This is the eunuch speaking. And Philip said, now this verse right here, that's in purple has been taken out of most Bibles. It's in the King James version. You're not going to find it in the ESV and ASB, but it's, it's in the, it's in the ancient scrolls in the, it's in the historical documents, right? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou may, which means if you don't believe with all your heart and you don't want, if you don't believe, like if, you, if you're not really believing, you can't be baptized. But if you do believe with all your heart, you can. This totally eliminates baby baptisms. They don't mean anything. So if you're, if once you get born again, the next step is to go get, go get baptized. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So he believed that this scripture that was written in scripture was about the Christ and he was born again. And so they commanded the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water and Philip and the eunuch and Philip, Philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and Philip was carried away and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. That is in Acts chapter eight. So there's a point in time where there's a there's a point in time where Yah turns people over to their own ways. And then the seed can't be harvested. And so that's, this is why I'm saying at this point in time, with what's happening in the world, which is also written in the Bible in advance, in great clarity, what's going on, uh, that you stop... Um, relying on your own self and be skeptical of your skepticism and open up the word of God and open up first Enoch and read with the understanding that now you can grasp the people groups a little bit better, right? And 
because what it means to be born again is that you have one body, spirit, hope, Lord, faith, baptism. Now that's that's Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. And let me read that real quickly. Let me pull that up. Because there's not a million different denominations like you, you know, again, like like uh, you look down the road and see all these denominations. Well, which way is right? Who can possibly know? No, it says in the in the scriptures, we write these things so that you may know. You can know. Now, one of the deceptions that's happening now is, it's going to get to the point where you're going to say, well, who can possibly know? Because we've got these deep fake videos. We've got these AI generated images. We've got AI generated video, text to video. As that proliferates and gets even more and more prolific throughout media, most people will throw their hands up and say, well, who can possibly even know? We can't even go now anything I look up, who can know if that's right? That's why you want to start looking at the scriptures now and understand them so that you are not deceived. Christ tells us to not be deceived. So let's read what Ephesians 4 says, 4 through 6. He says, There is one body. Uh, let me read it from the beginning, uh, verse 1. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a mather, manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love and eager to maintain the unity of of the spirit in the bond of peace. Verse four, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of us all who are born again, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now that is meant to say, and when he in other scriptures, they talk about the one body, that each person's gifts and talents are different. They're to be used in one spirit to edify the body. So you've been given gifts to do something with those gifts within the body and to edify the body. So my question at the end here is, who is a light to who? If you understand the scriptures, and that's why I said I'm not teaching Israelites today. I this is a I don't even claim to be a teacher, but I'm just giving scriptures and and what I, my observations. This is the question I have for you. If you read the scriptures, who are the lights? To, who are the light to the nations? Is it the born again adopted people who are the light to the nations, or is it the Israelites who are supposed to be the light to the nations? Well, if you have born again bloodline Israelites, relatives of Jesus Christ, teaching the word of God, why would you not listen? Why would you not want to listen? So we know who the light is to the nations. And this will be the end of this first video of my opening, and then I'll um, give my second part in the next video. But I want to end with this scripture, Matthew 7, 13 through 13 and 14. Yeshua says, enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Many people will go in by it in what they think is religion. So they're okay because they look around and like uh, Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? When he was talking to the embodiment of truth, Yeshua. You need to test the spirits to see whether they are from God when you are hearing things and discern, and discern what is true and hold on to what is good. And what is good is in the word of Yah, and it tells the truth. So if we're not in the word, then we're being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, and we're not able to discern the truth because Yeshua said, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Protestantism, which came out of Roman Catholicism, which are all Gentile driven takes on the Hebrew scriptures. Paul said to the people, uh, I forget whether it was Col um, Ephesians or Colossians, but he said to a group of Gentiles, I fear that after I leave, 
There will be men, uh, I know that after I leave, men will come out from among you, from the Gentiles, and will twist the scriptures and lead many astray. And it talks about all through the New Testament of this taking place, and this whole time of the Gentiles uh, that was taken place and was prophesied by Yeshua, that Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, that now when we go back to the scriptures and we look at them from a Hebraic perspective, we can see more clearly what they say, what the plan of God is because of that fifth and sixth group I talked about before. There is a, uh, a war happening and there are watchers who are watching and seeing all sides. And there's going to be some, there's going to be few, fewer that get saved than don't get saved. But if you want to get saved, you can get saved. It is possible and it is not too late. And you look at the ages again, when Abraham was called and you look at Moses, he was, uh, I believe he was 40 when he murdered the Egyptian. Then he went away for 40 years. I think he was like 70 or 80 when he came back and led the Israelites. So walking with Yah, it does not mean like I'm older, I'm past that, I'm, I've am i matured past that. It has nothing to do with that. You can be born again. It is possible. And you get born again through the word. It says, I think it's Peter who says that, that you are born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living word of God. So it can happen for you. You can be in the narrow gate if you want to. You can walk in his ways if you want to. It's a desire of the heart. And if your heart wants that, you can have that. So uh, with that, I'm going to end here and I will pick up the next video. Um, on the next video. So thank you guys for joining and I hope this helps someone. Thank you.